To all our CCR TV viewers, welcome. Today we have got a very important uh, topic, especially concerning students and teachers per se, and that's need for compulsory sex education in schools. We have uh, the experts with us. Uh, we have the chairperson of the Goa State uh, Commission for Protection of Child Rights, and that's none other than Peter Borges. Peter, welcome. We have uh, another specialist uh, with us, uh, and uh, she is qualified in medical and psychiatry social work, has been working with uh, the institutions for nearly four years, and last uh, four months or six months with the ITI in Perne, and she's a counselor, and welcome Anishka Desa. Thank you. And uh, we have uh, one of the youngest participants that we have here, a student, from uh, St. Xavier's College in Mafsa and Charlene Delilah Heredia, welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have been uh, hearing about a lot of cases of late. So far, there have been six information, first information reports that have been registered against eight teachers across Goa. A parent said, increase in sexual harassment complaints against the teachers is a major concern among parents. There is a need to create awareness in educational institutes about bad and good touch so that children are aware of the same. There is absolute need to take a preventive steps. There is need to conduct a counseling about uh, such a things. Parents have been uh, calling for preventive steps as sex abuse cases against uh, teachers are on the rise. There has been a spike in the cases of alleged sexual harassment, molestation, outraging modesty, and uh, harassment of students by teachers right from school up to the university level. And this has led to serious concern among everybody in Goa. One teacher has already been charged for raping his minor student. Peter, I think you have been uh, dealing with uh, this uh, child's rights. And could you tell us what is actually the scope of your uh, uh, organization? So, commission is a quasi-judicial body. Uh, we have a mandate to monitor three acts. One is the POXO Act, Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act 2012. The Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015 and the right to education so what we are doing like there are there are specific mandates for us uh, provided in the acts and rules what is the role of commission and uh, we are doing playing that role very actively uh, are you also monitoring these cases that have all of a sudden cropped up in goa yeah so uh, monitoring uh, the preventive response as well as the the response to these cases uh, POXO Act mandates us. Yeah, that's section uh, 21, I suppose. Yeah. Of, of the Act. Yeah. Mandates us to do a lot of prevention work. That's there defined in the rules also. So we have trained uh, in the recent month around 3,000 teachers on personal safety education. So that's that's a big uh, big initiative on the part of commission which we have done in recent years. Basically, with an intent to have uh, one at least one teacher in the school. Uh, who, are, who can then train the other students or other teachers replicating the uh, personal safety education program. Uh, secondly, uh, in the recent times, uh, we have seen that uh, cases were reported late and uh, we have issued an advisory. We have suggested some amendments to the already existing a advisory of the... Uh, Peter, can I interrupt you for uh, a little while? Yeah. You said uh, the cases have been reported late. Now, what is the mandatory uh, time uh, uh, that a complaint is lodged by a student or the head of the institution comes to know about it? 
what is the time limit that the uh, head should act on the complaint so in the uh, in the advisory by directorate of education it is within 12 hours you know but i will still feel that it should be very quick as possible yeah because it, yeah. in some case it was yeah. 3 or 6 months yeah. and uh, the head of the institution just kept quiet yes and yesterday itself uh, i had a convened a high level meeting and uh, we thought that uh, hm the head of the school should take all all the responsibilities of reporting because sometimes uh, counselors who are sometimes address these issues uh, are on contract basis and you know they they sometimes uh, like you know are unsure you know how to report and you know because uh, finally they have to appear in the court also when they are the complainant so which is why we thought headmistress should be the focal point to report the matter and then uh, they can you know bring the matter to justice uh, but uh, as a preventive measure uh, what is the work that uh, you undertake you talked about 3000 and odd teachers being uh, trained yeah what type of training this is so basically this uh, this covers a whole lot of oxo act and uh, also uh, we call it in preventive uh, education program personal now, when, safety when you, when you talk about preventive in these areas so don't you think that sex education should be mandatory or compulsory in the curriculum of the school and the colleges and universities now uh, it's already compulsory it's already there i mean it's there since long time and how we deliver is something which uh, i'm getting uh, uh, understanding that this particular aspect is not delivered properly even when it's in the curriculum yeah why 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 do you think this is happening so uh, that's uh, that because of we always considered uh, discussions around uh, sex and sexuality as a taboo we don't openly neither in the families or neither in the uh, school system there are uh, teachers or parents who are confident enough to discuss this issue I, 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 I beg to defer if you say parents uh, are, are confident. Most of the parents do not uh, share all these uh, concerns about uh, adulthood, uh, from child to adulthood. You know, th these are the problem. Adolescence uh, stage. If you don't tackle the adolescence stage in terms of science, it, your programs will not be effective at all. I would like you to comment on that. Maybe what I am saying is not correct. Yeah, so the, this uh, we we can't blame parents also because uh, in the it's culturally seen as a taboo in a in a whole system we don't uh, comfortably discuss this. But then you know there are ways and means uh, uh, how the uh, whole uh, area has evolved now. There are uh, we reach out to the mediums where young people come to know like have you educated the education department and the Goa Board of Education about the bigger need to tackle this subject see it's already a mandate uh, and uh, that's there it's uh, basically uh, there are two agencies which deal with it one is SERT so they have continuous programs uh, surrounding this subject matter also the Goa State AIDS Control Society also have adolescent education program there also they train so these two uh, and of course uh, there are uh, there is health department also which engages under their so all, all okay. this work is being done compartmentalized. Yeah. And Aniksha, you have been uh, doing a lot of work uh, with the students. Yes. And could you share with us what is exactly your mandate? So uh, I would say that, uh, like Sir Peter Borges said, uh, it is very important to start at an early age. Like early means how early? maybe at the age of three years when the child understands the importance of good touch and bad touch. So that means you have to handle the parents? Yes. So parents should tell the child when they are early only, like when they are a toddler only, okay this is something that is not right and this is something that has to be said a no to and something that has to be said like I do not like this very boldly and confidently so that even the child is aware that these are my private parts and nobody is allowed to touch them. So I think this is the have education. You, have you been conducting uh, a training for the parents per se, at large? Whether they, they have children in schools or not, that's another matter. Uh, so I would say that I'm not conducting a training for parents. But is there any other agency that you know? Uh, or that you coordinate with? Not really, but I have been working with students from uh, 
Our Lady of Devar High School where I've conducted. Uh, which training. age? Because for us, the age is more important. So you can say from the age group of uh, 12 to 16. Yeah, do you think uh, the adolescence period starts at 12? No, it starts way before that. Yes. It starts uh, It starts at the age, like for the girls, it starts a little earlier. Uh, much earlier, yeah. yes. So I think and now with this environmental uh, changes, it's even much earlier. Right. So, uh, the ch and now since the child is exposed to a lot of social media, the child has grown even more faster and matured more faster to their age. So, it is very important to be socially aware and also aware at home, like so the parents are also uh, in par with the child what they are aware of and it is important to have a conversation at least in today's times, what is a good touch, what is a bad touch, what is, uh, what is important to know, just as WHO says physical health, mental health, social health is important. The same way sexual health is also important. And also uh, need, the child also needs to know what are the important parts, what is not important, what is a good touch and what is a bad touch. Now, who will uh, pass on this information to the parents? So, uh, first of all, it is the duty of the teachers, the... Of the school person. Uh, yeah, of, of the, the school, school, of the environment. Actually, of all of us to be socially aware that is the first and to have this conversation among us because if we don't have the conversation among us it's always going to be a taboo so i think it is individual efforts that come do you think the schools even at the lowest level you take about pre uh, kg and pre primary do you think that they talk about this with the parents no i do not think they even have a session with them but it is very important at least from the kg to start with good touch and bad touch that is important. Yes. And uh, do you think that the school authorities as such are also fluent in dealing with this subject? Because uh, anybody cannot talk about uh, these uh, situations. Yes. So I think proper, ne uh, proper training needs to be provided to the school uh, by counsellors or by trained professionals who have been working in this field. Uh, so that they train the teachers and authorities how to convey the message to the parents and the parents to convey to the message to the children. So that will be an effective way of delivering the message to the children as well. Uh, you talked about the school that you are working that's in a divar. I, was, uh, I had conducted a training session with them uh, where I had highlighted the importance of good touch and bad touch, like Sir said also, about the POXO Act, which is very important, and uh, how they can register or file a complaint, and the uh, disadvantages also of it, like the misuse of the POXO Act also. But uh, how much stress do you lay on uh, the preventive aspect? Preventive is very important. Preventive aspect is quite laborious. Yeah. And you never know whether it is effective or not. Yeah. So what is the methodology adopted uh, by the schools, by the government per se, to implement uh, so that uh, problems do not arise? So I would say that uh, in schools right now, it uh, the, like the st curriculum starts from the 8th standard, actually from the 7th standard but it is not wholly and solely focused on. So I think and whenever the conversation is held, males are separated from the females in schools. I think that should not be done and males and females should be made together and set together and explain the entire thing because as females, as women or females or girl child, it is very important for the male child also to know about this. Uh, they need to understand. Yes, they yes. need to understand and have a, a good uh, background on what is being shared with them. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we have a, a student uh, with us. Uh, uh, what is your experience uh, in the college? Earlier we had uh, ragging incidents, but not uh, this type of uh, behavior, especially from the teachers. What is your view? I feel that ragging is um, a much more common topic, talked about more than anything these days, but we don't find as many cases as we found before yeah. regarding ragging. Yeah. And uh, do you have any cases of this molestation or sexual deviation uh, from the teachers or maybe from the students themselves? Uh, no, not as of now, but in the previous years, yes, there were cases. Yeah. And uh, do you think you are empowered as a student to handle this type of situations? Yes, definitely. The teachers talk to us and say that we should voice our opinions if anything goes wrong. Shalene, you said the teachers talk to you all. Talk means what? Is it a half an hour's program, 10 minutes program or it is a, uh, sessions which are well regulated? They have sessions on ragging yeah. and if any misconduct happens. So they have uh, every two weeks a session on ragging. 
to inform the students. So the sessions are for one hour. For one hour. Yeah. And uh, you are happy with uh, what is being shared with you? Yes. Yeah. And uh, do you have any problems uh, with the students, uh, male students and female students? How do they deal? Uh, no, no problems as of now. Uh, absolutely nothing. And as far as the teachers go, any cases that uh, you know about uh, these deviations in sexual behavior? Uh, not recently, but 10 years ago there was an incident, I think, in the HSS. Yeah. Where you, you, you think uh, that uh, the educational system caters to the needs for prevention of these problems? Yes, I feel the government has become much more rigid and strict regarding ragging. So we had an inspector also come to talk to us about the topic. Yeah, and you, do you think the teachers are empowered to deal with the subject efficiently? Yes, they are. That they are. You, you have got no problems. No. But overall, the student community. Now, you had all these problems, six uh, FIRs in schools, students. What do you feel about it as a student? I feel that um, if any student has any problem, like we are much, uh, we, have, we are more empowered now to talk to our teachers more openly because I feel that connection with the teacher wasn't there in the previous years. That teachers are more understanding now to us. So if any student has a problem, we can voice our opinions. Yes. Uh, Peter, you have been uh, dealing with a lot of legal issues, especially. Are you happy with the preventive aspects, how they are put across, how they are implemented? And do you keep a record on all the programs that are being done uh, in schools? Yeah, so preventing uh, uh, prevention is gaining momentum now. Uh, especially because uh, there are more contemporary issues which are coming because sexual abuse is not only limited to uh, it's also uh, coming more often in the online world online child sexual abuse also so we are laying stress on uh, you know what are the preventive and how to give this comprehensive information uh, in a uh, and also put it across in a age appropriate manner like you know uh, by phasing out like adolescent like you know which age how to present it or uh, what are the contents of that you know so that's that's something which we are uh, commission has been because uh, also recently we have seen that uh, online child sexual abuse is becoming a major concern uh, especially uh, we we came across data that around uh, 43,000 child sexual abuse material images were downloaded in Goa in 2021 so that means uh, i mean uh, we need to also understand that uh, the digital age where yeah, you can't you can't uh, stop yeah you, you can't stop so then uh, we have to create that mechanism where young children are protected in that space also so that's something which is more worrying and not known to many parents and neither teachers. Yeah, it's quite yeah. a tough uh, task yeah, so to handle all uh, this. Currently my focus is uh, you know, trying to fix that because now everyone has a mobile, everyone yes. has a smartphone yes. and uh, abusers have reached our bedrooms. I know. I yeah, know. So uh, plus you also deal with uh, problems in the offices and other places also. Uh, not really commission as a mandate like you know our focus is very clear our mandate is very clear we try to reach out to children to children and basically uh, for, yeah, for children empower them you know so that you know they uh, report also so even there we have now recently again in the advisory we have suggested an amendment that you keep a box where there are no CCTVs so that uh, ch children get confident to report because uh, I analyze few cases and I realize that there was a fear you know, yeah, definitely, complain against the teacher. Yes, so yes. that's so prevention as well as response is uh, very much essential. Uh, we also closely f follow uh, the justice part also. Ha have there have been any convictions uh, so far in the work that you have undertaken? Yeah. So conviction uh, in the last t I think ten years of uh, Poxo Act coming into we had I think six fifty one Poxo cases in the last decade. Uh, 10 years decade and uh, uh, conviction rate is quite poor uh, due to various factors but uh, uh, also there is another aspect which is come in public domain is uh, the romantic relationship especially yeah, the yeah. 16 to 18 uh, uh, so we see uh, I, I don't want to make a 
uh, issue out of it, but then uh, not majority, we do not have figures, but then overall we witness some where you know uh, young children get into relationship. Yeah, this yeah. is happening so more now in Yeah, the, so uh, that is also there. Yeah, this, is, this is where either they are in the college, yeah. and it is uh, colleges, they have got all those big shows and all that, and I think uh, there it starts. Uh, I think uh, Charlene will be able to tell us about this. You have got these big shows now. In our days in the college, we would have these athletic meets and everybody yes. was focused in sports. Today, no. Today, it's your events that uh, are being patronized uh, by the management of the colleges and the students bring in a lot of money. I think there was a case uh, in Mapsa somewhere where the students went, they went into drugs, into alcohol. They met with an accident the next day, early morning, and uh, two of them died. Do you think that the uh, uh, social awareness in the college is missing on these aspects, on behavioral? What, yes. uh, what do you think, Charlie? Yes, I feel um, teachers should have more talks with well, when, you, when you talk about, uh, Peter talked about the relationships. These relationships start today. Uh, somebody said, uh, uh, was asking, looking for a girl to go, mm -hmm. uh, wanted to get married. He was in England and says, I have come, can you help me? And says, there are so many. He says, no, everybody is at uh, fifth or sixth standard. They have got their boyfriends and girlfriends. <laughs> what do you think? For me, um, I think that relationships start around like school. Yeah, so because like you are seven, adolescent eight, stage. Eight. Exactly. Now, now, when you talk of adolescent stage, there are stages in adolescence. Exactly. The third uh, stage, which is the advanced, there is where you know these relationships will start. What do you think? You 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 should be knowing now much better <laughs> because you are not connected with the youth. Or maybe Anishka, you'll be able to shed light on this. Uh, so, sir, I think uh, it is also because the children are exposed to a lot of social media and they see, you know, for mm -hmm. them it is, uh, we say it is a learnt behaviour. So the child is learning by seeing something else which is not even appropriate to his age. So they do not know what is happening. So at this point, the schools come in picture, the parents come in picture, the individuals who are older to them come in picture like their siblings on guiding them what is, what is, uh, what is the age appropriate behaviour and also about the con contraceptives u uh, contraceptive exactly. uses and uh, you know all the diseases associated with it because at this point i think a lot of children at the age of 15 especially girls are pregnant we have child pregnancies because of uh, romantic relationships and then they r run away from homes because of all of these and it is very important to have a conversation with them uh, and first of all, to have a conversation with them, you need to be socially very close with them and build that rapport with them. Unless you build the rapport with them, they will not be able to understand. They'll never they open to. Exactly, yeah. So I think it is very important to be closely associated with these children as teachers or as parents to deliver that message to the children. So don't you think so with all what is happening now, we need to deal with uh, it as a subject per se where even you have textbooks and things like that, where, you know, uh, uh, literature, good literature is available to them with all this what uh, we are sharing. I wouldn't say a subject, but I would say some chapters or maybe a small book or maybe like how we have value education or how we have other subjects. Well, even value education today. Yes. If you see what is happening in the world, where are the values? Right. And now they say that values cannot be taught. They should be caught. Yeah. Yeah. But if there are no values in the society, you, you look at what is happening in Goa. Where are the values? Exactly. The most powerful uh, person gets uh, away. If you, yeah. have, you have got a good connection, you can do any crime also and you get away. Yeah. So where are these? Totally See, if you don't have a, a, a course material and that course is implemented, it is evaluated, all this will be just uh, in paper. What do you say? Oh, what's your feeling? So I feel uh, just like any other subject, this needs to be uh, taught to the student by trained professionals. Yes. So I think it should be made compulsory in schools from the beginning. And not only that, uh, you see we have got optional subjects now uh, yes. in schools. Yes. What happens in the optional subjects, nobody knows. Right. So this is another one of the same type. Unless uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, checked, unless it is evaluated right. in black and white. Right. Do you think so, Peter, you can uh, look for real changes in the behavior of the society now? 
If you look at one side, one side in the adults, we have got corruption. Sex crimes are increasing. All that is what we see in Goa today. It's not good. I don't know what, what you feel about it, but people are fed up with what is happening in Goa. You have seen that accident now, that yes. motor accident. You know what has happened. You know people are, are shouting all over from north to south. Nobody seems to be happy. Why all this degradation in morals and values? And now you have got six uh, first information reports for the first time. Why do you think this is happening? And I am sure the politicians have a lot to, to answer for that. Peter, can you throw light on this? Uh, so I, I will go right to the... Uh, See, these cases which have come recently also children uh, who have suffered for quite some time after the crimes being committed or they have been long, uh, long time where these offenses were committed. I think we should uh, build that uh, ecosystem in the schools where especially uh, I will touch the mental health because that's something which is finally neglected. There was, you know, if you remember, there was one youth who was killed by uh, some students. It happened in Go, and they are in the jail. So from there to now, what are the lessons uh, learned? You have the act. How has the act uh, been able to prevent uh, all these problems? Is there a close monitoring? Is there the right uh, type of education material which is available to Anybody and everybody. So and that's what I was saying. Like yeah. you know, besides material, the human resources play a big role. The availability of counselors in the school is something which bothers me a lot. We don't have enough professionals there, so that need to be universally like you know, all schools need to be covered under that scheme. So that is something because then children have someone to even if they face or undergo some abuses or even they want to seek some information because whatever information as she had expressed like you know available in the internet might not be you know age appropriate or might not be uh, true so human resources again like you know what i share you know as a actual information in a comprehensive manner so that that is uh, more uh, can be relied on so that kind of system we need to evolve in the school only then prevention would be strengthened and of course uh, uh, also the education or communication on this subject matters uh, should uh, also be ICT based because uh, if you give them books, booklet, they won't like you know if you create some videos, you, keep, you create some IT content on that, that will be more appealing and so we need our, our ways of communication with the children it should be in times. So uh, do you mean to say this uh, whole thing should be treated in a special manner? Yes. Well, the, because there's nothing, now it is all a generalized. Well, what do you think? I think uh, it should be uh, put as a subject. I think it should be uh, made very important. You could even add uh, values, morals and things like that and make it a comprehensive for the human uh, growth, of human development on good social or cultural lines. Don't you think uh, something is missing in this whole program? And this is where the education department, uh, your board and your SCRT, they come into the picture. But they are not uh, the ground players. They are the office players. So unless somebody who is uh, rooted in the ground, who understands what is happening and then provides solution, then only there can be a change. Are you happy with uh, the work that you are doing? Definitely you'll be happy, no problem. But how happy you are in looking at uh, what is happening today in Goa? I am uh, not very happy, I will say, because uh, professionally and personally also, I have seen a lot of, lot of children who are using their phones and uh, otherwise also, who are not even aware what a good touch is, what a bad touch is. They are not sexually aware about even menstruation. So I think here everybody including schools, the education department, us as individuals play a very vital role. We need to communicate with them and communication how it is delivered is very important for, to bring a change within. So you agree that there has to be a change? Yes. Com yes. Shalin, what do you yes. think? So? Are, are you happy with what is happening? No. As ma'am said uh, regarding social media, I feel like uh, 
children are learning on social media to, um, and also the peer pressure to have relationships at an early age. They're unaware of uh, sexually transmitted diseases, unaware of the benefits um, um, of the benefits and the disadvantages of learning basic um, sexual. Yeah, but but, but uh, the teenagers should take responsibility for their health. Yes, and that can be uh, done through education. Exactly, I feel like sexual education is just as important as any other subject that they teach in school, and it should be taught from a young age, as Mom said, from ages three to four, because it's needed in a child's upbringing. But when we talk here, the role of the school and the agencies, like you have the commission here, I think uh, you all have uh, a bigger and better role to plug the loopholes, because we are continuing with the same thing now for so many years. Uh, do you go for updates uh, whenever you come these problems? Do you recommend uh, suggestions to the government and the education department that in view of this, what is happening, we need to change, especially at the level of education in this uh, matter in schools? Because unless you make the suggestions, See, who are the people in the education department or, or the world? These are uh, government teachers. And we know what yes. government teachers are. We know what their standard. Whatever you may say. Yeah, I know you will not comment on that, but I know. And that's, uh, that's the reason why the degradation uh, uh, in all values come from there. Unless you stop this uh, degradation in the morals, in the values, and now these aspects, nothing will happen. So the change has to be all inclusive. Do you propose, uh, in view of these happenings, that uh, uh, sex education should be uh, made part of the educational system in schools and now also at the college level? Yes, I, I do agree with that. I feel that is already compulsory. Uh, but then uh, also we should also see some successes. You know, HIV has brought a sex discussion. Uh, more yes, and then you, we, you, you we needed a big problem. Uh, yeah, so you needed to have so HIV when HIV could have been prevented if yeah. uh, measures could have been taken at the root level. You grow and you want to see what fruit the tree has given. So we, with uh, HIV around, we were able to at least uh, dispel myths and you know everything around sexuality because. Uh, you know, the, so that actually brought in a lot of change and we, uh, at least now we are able to yes. discuss sex more openly. Otherwise, um, before it was a taboo. I, uh, it, it was it a was. taboo. It and was a taboo. and I, I think, uh, I think uh, on the based on the success, I think we should be able to contain provided we have right resources, right programs, you know, well designed which are uh, evidence based sometimes you know we talk a lot but sometimes we don't have evidence driven program so that's what something we but today do. there are experts and good experts you know, yeah. nowadays we never had this expertise yeah and uh, if you want to know any good classified information you log in uh, and you can talk to the experts what do you yeah. say yes completely completely but I think also uh, if you want to talk to the experts I think uh, including me, if I was a child, I would say I wouldn't go online and uh, talk to an expert. Rather, I would go to somebody who was trusted. Yes. Like for uh, like how uh, Sir Peter Borges said, also counselors should be made important in school or should be provided so that the child has better rapport with. Yeah, the because as children, we yes. all have a special love for our teachers. Yes. Yeah, it's your yes. mother, your father, and then the teacher. Yes. And what teacher says, gospel truth. <laughs> do the teachers, are they empowered even to talk about all your act and things like that? Do you think the teachers are really empowered? If we call them now, for example, and tell them what is this section 21, what is this? Do you think they, they, they can talk about it? So we continuously do this program. It's not only this year we have done, we continuously do. Now how much, you know, especially we expect uh, schools to send the right teachers. Uh, recently we have seen, we have done a lot of programs and they are not sending teachers like I recently came across where we did a program on drug abuse for 350 teachers and they send a lab assistant you know who doesn't have connect. So, so, the, so school, the school the responsibility school also. Says, this is no priority for us. So How do you change that? Peter? You, you, you are the right person because you are a quasi judicial person. I think you are one strong letter will open their eyes. So basically being a quasi judicial body, uh, our orders are re mere recommendation which the government uh, 
can uh, you know uh, comply or not comply but having said that uh, i felt that uh, government has recently been very responsive and uh, a lot of policy reforms have been brought in but having said that i will still uh, say like you know we need to fix our priorities when it comes to uh, all these issues which uh, not only uh, all those contemporary issues including even drugs now new problem is come of vaping you know so these these are these issues need to be understood very well by and the school since and you talked and about vaping more girls and women are into vaping than men <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether you have come across uh, uh, this problem, Anishka. Anishka, if you go to a school to undertake your program, could you share with us what you do and how you do? Uh, so my focus is basically when I address students, it is basically about good touch, bad touch. So first of all, I would start by building a rapport with them. I wouldn't directly go and you know put my uh, suggestions to them. That is not how it works. You need to build a rapport with that. You need to break the ice, as you say, and then talk to them. Okay, so this is how it is. Get on a personal level. It is not only from a professional level, but also on a personal level. Talk to them so you make it more authentic, and uh, they also feel closeness to the subject. Yes. So and, and that's important. Exactly. That's important. Yes, and then you deliver yeah. the message. And I have also seen like after the delivery of the message, a lot of students have come and told me, okay, this is how I felt and what should I have been done if, you know, this was the thing. So uh, sometimes it is not possible for us to take up the step because it should be the willingness of the students and the parents and the teachers to come forward and take the step if it has happened at the home, at the institution or wherever, depending on the environment. It is the total willingness of the students because, as we know, even Poxo says there. there can, I mean, Poxo has said it. It should be one-time interrogation, and if depending on the age of the child, but we know that it is not possible. It has to. I mean, the ch a child has to appear in the court, and uh, the child court. But you know, a lot of times, uh, I think uh, the officials also go and ask the questions again and again, you know, bringing up uh, the same kind of trauma to the child. So sometimes even parents do not want to raise the issue and as you said, six to seven months later is because they see maybe a change in behavior, maybe a change in mental health, maybe they are depressed, maybe they have anxiety, maybe they have stress related problems. So then they come up and talk about the issue. But the, the reason why the FIR or the complaint is not lodged is because of shame. So I think here a lot of parents or uh, maybe if I was a person who had, you know, who was there, maybe even I would have felt that shame. But it's very important to communicate and tell that this is, this is how it is. If we do not take a step now, it will never happen. But you need uh, teachers as good communicators and then good educators. Yeah. So, so you have to develop these qualities first in the teachers because they feel that this is not a subject where there is examination and whatever there is no examination is no subject. I think uh, more than teachers, I think the management should be uh, told because the teachers are ready to take the step but then it is the management also who needs to approve to this. So it is not... Have you been working with many schools other than the school that you mentioned earlier in Dubai? So uh, along with even Don Bosco, I had conducted an extended program when, uh, with one of the schools in Satanese. So even there, uh, and it was highlighted on O'Heraldo also. So it was also a good touch, bad touch. And uh, there was rapport building. So even the teachers over there understood what you know good touch and bad touch is. It's not only about talking good touch and bad touch cannot be delivered only by talking you need to show certain images or certain ways uh, for example there was a demonstration done to one of the students the way the touches you know sometimes a teacher hugs a student as a as a form of appreciation that oh lovely you have done such a wonderful job but maybe the message is not delivered well where it, the child can also say oh he hugged me so it's a bad touch uh, we had that recent incident during the world cup in women's where the president of the spanish he kissed uh, the captain of the team on the lips and that is absolutely yeah. how, how, how do you classify that? it is absolutely a bad touch nobody has the right to uh, get into the private areas of anybody and even if anybody is into a romantic relationship it is still important to ask for consent 
and consent doesn't happen with children consent happens after 18 or once yes. you know you are matured enough yes. but even in romantic relationships or wherever it is consent or even i can say in marital relationships consent is very 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 important because we do not have consent then we have rape and other molestation and all the other problems that arise to it uh, and uh, uh, charlene do you agree what uh, our expert anishka has shared with us Yes, absolutely right. Good that touch, bad touch. Has it been explained to you when you were young? Uh, not as much, but we have come across it. Like in fifth grade, they had a talk about it. And um, not many students knew about yeah. the matter. As she also mentioned that girls are often surprised the first time they got their menstrual. So I feel like we need to have more about this topic. Yeah, but, but then you need also special sessions for the parents, I, I, I feel. And I also uh, uh, is that possible? Uh, you have got a yeah. PTAs now. Yes. Have you been, uh, Peter, have you been addressing the uh, parents, uh, teachers, uh, associations or organizations? Uh, as of now, no, we have not touched the PTA because uh, we have mostly focused on... I know you, I know you uh, have too much uh, on your yeah. hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then it will be a good idea to you know, get the PTA because ultimately PTAs are bodies which are under control. Yes. So I think it's up to the leadership at school level, you know how. Even to I don't think so. Most of the parents are even aware of the act that we have. Do you think so? Uh, no, act knowledge only those who are following might have, like you know. But yes. then uh, I I do feel that in some school PTAs are uh, doing good. They are very concerned about issues they take up. But with this changing uh, scenario, uh, don't you think so that? Uh, our uh, uh, whole uh, process uh, of uh, tackling the issue should also change. Yes, it should. Change. It, what yeah. do you What do you think? So I think we have two parts of the society that is rural and urban. Yes. Urban uh, are more. They are more uh, knowledgeable. They are exposed to a lot of things. Rural, they are not. It is very important also to target that part of the society. Rural, like right now where I'm working also, I'm not uh, saying anything, but uh, right now where I'm working also, it is more of a rural area. Yes. You, you, you have to tackle them differently. Yes. The, the same treatment will not no, <laughs> work. And it is very important to deliver the message not only to one part of the society, but both the parts of the society. Because as much as urban is important, rural is also important. I would say more effort would be needed in the rural area. Yes, absolutely. True. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, are you happy with uh, the act? Does it cover all the aspects of problems? Or you need uh, it has to evolve still further? Uh, yes, uh, but there are some emerging issues uh, which are not really addressed in the act. And these are continuously we, in fact, we are trying to uh, amend the Goa Children's Act after 20 years. The amendment exercise is currently on. And uh, Goa has set an example earlier. With like, the Children's know, Act. With the Children's Act. Yes. And uh, we are trying to get uh, whatever areas are not addressed in the federal laws, we are trying to get it. Uh, I, is this act available for all the parents? And it is there in English, or regional language, uh, Konkani, Marathi, and all that, so that, you know, it is distributed for everybody. They may not read. That's another aspect. But uh, if you have that in a regional, local language, maybe some awareness is being created. So right now, the copies which I have seen are uh, English ones. I have not seen Konkani of yes, the Act. Yes, yes. But I think that's a good idea if government could notify and the Gazette in the original language. I think it could. Because uh, what are the lessons that you have learned as a chairperson uh, after all these uh, FIRs and all that uh, have been lodged? What do you think? Where did we go wrong or what did we miss? Uh, to sum it up, uh, I would say uh, protection is uh, everyone's responsibility and a shared responsibility. I have said that uh, very often in public forums because we, we shouldn't say it's only government. No, it is, it is. Said. But then there are key agents in that. Yeah. The key agents. Uh, uh, yes. So everybody has a role to play. Some have got a bigger role. Some have got a bigger role. But then protection also need to be understood. What is protection of children? In the Juvenile Justice Act, it mentioned four areas. One is abuse, exploitation, violence, and neglect. 
So these are the four areas we need to measure ourselves. Like you know, are we doing uh, the right things for our children when it comes to protection? Have we set mechanism in place? Exploitation, whether we have enough uh, system redressal mechanism, response mechanism in place. So that's something. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to get in some because commission has the power to monitor and bring about you, changes. You have got more powers yeah. than, than, and than yes, else. Yes, and uh, using those powers, uh, we have been able to get some reforms. That's good. That, that, yeah, that's and good. Uh, you know, good. I don't know whether you have witnessed uh, some of our success stories is uh, the Kadama versus advertising yes, Vimal. Yes, now you don't yes, see that. Yes, yes, you know, uh, so, so many buses were actually promoting something which we don't desire. So that's something which that's government good. has respected that, that, and uh, complied. I'm very happy, and I I feel that uh, we'll get more successes. And uh, 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 our focus has been to uh, create professionals. We need. Yeah. We, we need. Yeah. If you ask me, we yeah. like professionals. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Anishka? So I think. Uh, so as Sir Peter Borges said, uh, protection. But I also think. Protection is important, prevention is important, but change starts at home. Yes. So uh, change, like we also know that charity starts at home, change also starts at home and it is very important for the parents to be educated. So when uh, they go for their gynecology testing, just early, uh, you know, just after that even hospitals should uh, include teaching of um, teaching of what is good touch, bad touch, what is important for the child. Like even now babies are not, you know, any more safe. Eight month year old baby, six month year old baby. So at that time the baby is not uh, in a position to talk and tell that they have been molested or whatever. But uh, your parents also should be uh, uh, not like they should also be um, knowledgeable to know, okay, why is my child behaving in a certain way? What is the issue with them? Why are they behaving? Why has their behavior suddenly changed? So, to sum it up, change starts at home. Okay. Charlene, what is your take on all this now? I feel, uh, as Mam was saying, change starts at home. I feel like parents should be more open and uh, sex shouldn't be treated as a taboo. And if parents can talk to us comfortably, then we can also be comfortable and tell us if we have any problems. And if you're not going to be taught at home, then how are we going to be taught at school? So we need to be taught somewhere and we need to understand how everything happens. Yeah, basically this is the problem of adolescence and adolescence is the phase of life between a childhood and adulthood now from 9 to 19 years. It is a unique stage of human development and an important time for laying the foundations of good health. Adolescents experience rapid physical, cognitive, psychosocial growth. This affects how they feel, how they think, how they make decisions and interact with the world around them. Despite being thought of as a healthy stage of life, there is significant death, illness, injury in the adolescent years. Much of all this is preventable or treatable. During this phase, adolescents establish patterns of behavior, for instance, related to diet, physical activity, substance use, and sexual activity, and all that can protect their health and the health of others around them or put their health at risk now and in the future. CCRTV is very thankful to the chairperson, Mr. Peter Borges, nice Thank you. for you to have shared uh, your views. So also, Anishka, you are doing good work. But Thank we have you. to work still more yes. and it will never end. And uh, Charlene, you have expressed well, you have shared with us. Thank I you. think we all need to take this as a mission for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.